So yeah, I wanted to I wanted to discuss something, um, and this was a little bit more near and dear to my heart than than the average story. And I mean, a lot of it's gonna be near and dear to a lot of people, but I'm gonna explain the reason why it's near and dear to me. Um, yesterday in Masspeth, Long Island, they found uh, it was a, a a hot death, a hot car death for a child. Uh, I will, it's a one year old child and the parents who were 34 years old and 28 years old, the mother was 30, 28, the father was 34. They're being charged with reckless endangerment in the first degree and endangering the welfare of a child. Um, they apparently told the police that they set their phones to alert them to check on their baby every so often. So they were shopping. The answer was, well, we check on him every 25 minutes. So they're it looks like perp they purposely left their child in the car instead of taking the child with them inside to the inside shopping. Now, uh, that's rough to hear because the child, the, the the cause of death of the child was wasn't warranted. I mean, it's never it never is warranted, but the fact that you would actually go in shopping and checking on the kid instead of at least one of y'all staying with the kid if you don't want to take him in or, or you know the child in um i believe the child the one year it was a one-year-old boy and he was found alone crying and sweating in the back of the mercedes Benz. oh actually oh i i, I believe that i thought that the child passed away but no the child's still alive oh thank god thank All god right, so what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, what is your what is your thoughts on that? They were at the Americana malls in, in Long Island. What is your it's thoughts tough. on that on that situation? That's tough, man, because they intentionally left the kid in there. And to me, like that's just it's one thing if it was a mistake, but they intentionally did it and even went as far to say, well, we checked on them every 25 minutes as if that was okay. And there you go with the self accountability. They should have admitted fault at least, but they try to rationalize it and say, well, at least we, we checked up on them. It's just like, it's crazy. Like you said, somebody should have sat in the car with them. You know, they could have did it that way. Um, I don't condone doing it, but they could have at least left the AC running while they were in there to like, offer some kind of you know relief to the kid but i wouldn't leave i wouldn't leave a kid inside a car by itself period but on a hot summer day what a one-year-old no nah, not at all but i'm saying like they didn't even leave the ac on or nothing like it's crazy to me man and there's there's people that want to have kids and can't have kids and then you have people like this that intentionally just leave their baby like that. It's crazy, man, but you got it. All right. So this is going to take me a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to be talking for a little bit here and explaining this, my, the reason why I brought the story up. JB is a little familiar with the story. Um, I've, I've explained it to him in the past. Okay. Um, a lot of people who are going to watch this have heard the story and have, form their own opinion on it. And I'm going to tell you that uh, most of those opinions are filled of, uh, with hate and with people who cannot understand a mental block or a situation just out of your hands that you were not aware of. So about two years ago, roughly two years ago, um, I was at home with my girl, and we were it was pre-pandemic and everything, and we were watching the news, and we heard that in the Bronx on Kingsbridge Road and um, Sedwick, they uh, almost university, they found two one-year-old twins in the back of a car. The father left them in the car. It was an 85 degree day in New York, which the car felt like 105 degrees. And the, the, the two children, body temperatures were at 108 when they were discovered. Now, I heard the story 
and the first thing I thought of myself, I, I felt like from the beginning it was an accident. And I'm like, wow, no punishment that they could give that guy will ever make him make justice for what happened because I don't think the guy did it on purpose. Because the way it sounded was like the guy was so distraught and emotional when he figured it out and found out. And the way the people were being interviewed about his screams and cries and being on the phone, talking to his wife, telling them. It was sad to hear. Fast forward to the very next morning. I get a phone call from a very, very close friend. And pardon me if I get a little, a little bit emotional on this one. I get a phone call from a very close friend. Like, I mean, like a brother. Like I spent July 4th with him, you know, like a brother, brother. And he calls me. And he goes, he's crying on the phone, and he goes, yo, what you doing, like, around 1 o'clock? I'm like, I'm home with my girl. I ain't doing nothing. What's up? And he goes, yo, we're going to go to 161st to the courthouse. We got to go show show support for Mo. And I'm like, what the hell happened with Mo, bro? Like, now, a quick backstory before I jump into the story. We call him Momo. Um, I like I, I did ask him for permission to speak about this, and he he granted me permission and told me thank you for giving me giving him a heads up. In the neighborhood, we were knuckleheads. About fifteen, his brother, the youngest brother, was like like my little brother, like my father used to son him, and he used to come chill in my crib every time. Not Mo in particular, his his younger brother. Um, so Mo was the good one. He went to college, went to the army. He's a he's actually a psychotherapist, uh, and he travels to different destinations to 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 counsel um, troop troopers. Uh, you know, uh, soldiers, I mean, sorry, not you, soldiers. So he he flies a lot to, you know, at that point it was Iraq, at that point it was Afghanistan, just to do like a, a month of trying to counsel soldiers because, you know, he understands because he had his PTSD as well. But this is a guy we're talking about who has a beautiful wife, absolutely gorgeous wife. He has, and it was five kids, um... And he had these two twins. This guy was living the American dream, a beautiful house, Rockland County, a uh, great job. His wife has a great job. His older kid is 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 um is developing to a great young man. His uh his oldest daughter is developing to a great young woman, and then his middle child is a kid, you know, growing up with two twins under him. And those twins. Jesus Christ, beautiful kids. Um, at the end of this, I will post a picture of, of, of them so people can see the pictures of the kids. Getting to the story. I get that phone call. Yeah, I'm sorry, JB, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag this aside a little bit. No, you're good, bro. You're good. Get, getting back to the story. So I get that phone call, and I go, what, did Mo, what happened with Mo? Like out of Mo, why would Mo be in trouble? Like that's, that's the, the like out of everybody. I I put money down that he won't get in trouble. And he goes, he was the one who left the kids in the car. Bro, I broke down. My girl's like, what happened? Like I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. And I'm like, that was a very close friend of mine who, who lost the twins. I was like, I'm, I'll, I'll be in court. I actually went to, to the courthouse and it was full of family and friends, people I haven't seen in years. And, you know, I'm I'm still very close to his brother and his sister. I, with him, you know, we talk on and off, but, you know, he, we're brothers to the end, but, you know, we don't communicate as much as me and his sister or me and his younger brother do. And his cousin, his cousin's my, 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 my bro, bro. Like, you know, his birthday was two days ago and I hit him up, you know, on text, no Facebook, no nothing else. But getting back to the story, um, I found out that the twins were his, and 
I'm a wreck about it. I go to the courthouse and we're there and, you know, the news media, people screaming, oh, he's a murderer, da, da, da. I could see it in his face, bro. Like that guy, I, the first thing I said was people got to watch him. He's going to commit suicide. Like he, he didn't look good. He didn't look good. And, you know, from conversation with him at, afterwards, he said that he didn't, he didn't feel good. Uh, the two twins, God, they were beautiful kids. God rest their souls. Uh, the two twins, what happened that day from, from my discussions with him personally, because I did go, I even went to the funeral. Um, I got to see the angels in, in, in the, in the caskets and, you know, they laid there beautiful. I mean, you know, heart wrenching. But God, this, like I said, you're going to see the pictures of beautiful kids. So um, he explained the story. You know, I've heard it more from third parties than him directly, but he did explain some of the story, uh, some of his feelings or whatever. But the story that I understood was he woke up that morning and, you know, he, he him and his wife take turns on, on dropping the kids off to daycare. And he had just came back from a from a mission about a couple of weeks before where he was in Afghanistan. I think he went to Afghanistan or Iraq and you know he was counseling or whatever. That morning he drove the kids and he dropped off his oldest son. I mean not his oldest, I'm sorry, his third child, the, the middle child. He dropped the he dropped them off at his daycare in somewhere in Yonkers. Uh he works in the Bronx, so and, and he truly went to work. The twins were sleeping in the car. And when he went to work, he goes and parks the car where he usually parks the car at the lot. You know, has his music on. He's, you know, another day at the office, gets out the car, walks over to the office, and goes about his business working. He get, he spoke to his wife and told his wife, hey, you might have to pick up the the, the kids today because I can't I can't you know leave work on time to pick them up fast forward about 4 p.m. he jumps back in the car he pulls out the, the parking lot and he drives up two blocks when it clicked he pulls over jumps out the car, calls his wife cry, screaming, grabs the kids, and you can hear him screaming in agony about that his kids are dead. You know, he got he got arrested. He was arrested. He was um he actually pleaded guilty uh two years later he pleaded guilty to uh reckless endangerment. Now I knew from the beginning that he wasn't, he didn't do that on purpose. This is, this guy, this is, he's the American dream guy. He lived the American dream. And God, he's a fucking great guy. Like he's, he's an amazing guy. So I knew, I knew, you know, you're going to get backlash because of what happened. And mind you, nobody can hurt you more than you losing your kids. Nobody can hurt you more. Um, You know, he did tell me that suicide thoughts different through his mind but you know he he also had to take into consideration that he had three more to live for um he didn't care about going to jail he didn't he you know he he had to fight it for his family but you know like i said there's no bigger punishment you could have gave him than jail they're bigger than his his own demons kicking in instead of jail and like i said this guy's a great guy like he's an amazing person very smart but that little lapse didn't just change his life, it changed history. And he, since then, he's had another child with the, with the same person. They have another kid, it's a baby, he's a, it's a baby, uh, I think it's one years old already, or close to being one years old. But the reason why I'm saying the story was because of what happened yesterday in Long Island. And I wanted to share that story about 
a wonderful human being who had a mental lapse that I want to say completely destroyed his life, but definitely destroyed a big part of his heart. Um, I just feel like, you know, and then the, the judgments are going to always be there because nobody can take accountability and nobody can understand their mistakes. That mistakes happen in life. Um, there's a documentary I will be posting it in the in the um, on the description and as well as in the the ending of this video, where it explains a few families who've had that situation happen to them, where their kids have died in hot cars and it was uh, all due to a memory lapse. But that one little change of the highway being closed, the exit being closed just completely made him forget that he didn't drop off the kids. Wow. So, yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, I reached out to him and asked him, bro, do you mind me talking about it? He said, no, thank you for the heads up. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead. I'm um, down the road. Maybe I can interview him. You know, I, I don't want to interview him now where it's a, uh, possibility that you know he'd be attacked on my platform and that's the last thing I would want because like I said he's an amazing great guy and I wouldn't want him to go through that again because he already went through it before he doesn't you know I don't I think he's strong enough to handle it but what I will be doing is um I will post a video of the of the situation after this video at the ending of this video and then I will post videos of, uh, of the picture uh, a picture of the twins and also the, the, the documentary the video um the, the the name of the documentary that we that I watched that explained it um laws have laws I'm not sure if the laws took effect already but he's him his family have been part of a of trying to put in a law a child safety law where there's censors in cars just in case you forget because it happens more way more frequent than we know so yeah. with that being said jb uh any questions or any opinions on that on that situation uh yeah man uh it's hard to say i can relate to it because i don't even know what i would be able to do man he's a strong man to be able to bounce back and persevere through all that man because like you said there's no punishment that could have been given to him because mentally his own punishment he has to relive that you know every day almost and it's sad you know because things like that do happen there's times where I, like i have a push start on my car sometimes i forget to turn it off and I'll go in a house and come out three hours later and my car's still running because I forgot to turn it off. Just a mental lapse. Somebody may have called me or whatever. So a mental lapse does happen, you know. It just so happened that, you know, he lost his twins out, out of that. And, um, you know, I feel for him, man. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I before the whole thing, the whole situation started, I uh, – I felt the person wasn't at fault. Uh, th th I, I felt it was a memory lapse from the beginning, before I even found out who it was. But you know, um, like I said, man, going to the funeral and seeing those two angels in in in, in their, you know, final resting place. I'm not gonna say it was the roughest thing I've ever done because they look so peaceful and beautiful, but. It was hard. It was very hard. Definitely. You know? And uh, uh, you know, so uh, I just want to end it off on that note. You know, it's a somber note, but you know, I, I will be placing the stuff afterwards so people could see the article and you know, understand. You know, he did plead guilty just because you know. It was just to get this, get it over with because he didn't want to keep going to court for that. He didn't care about doing jail time because 
he's in, he's he, he's mentally in jail afterwards in his own mind you know and it's sad and unfortunate because this is a guy who had it all success you know beautiful family and he still does he's still successful he still has a beautiful family it's just a big chunk is missing and you know that's unfortunate but you know much love to you mo um and I thank you for letting me talk about it and jb also thank you for letting me talk about it anybody who's listening to it and you know is is okay with listening to the story i thank you guys no rush to judgment you know it's it was a painful one to see man but on that note jb any final words my brother uh nah man i just want to wish you and the missus the wifey a safe trip um i can't wait to hear the story see the pictures the videos and i wish you guys the best man be safe out there to the audience hope you like to uh enjoy the episode um with me and gabe's schedule he has a daytime schedule i have a nighttime schedule so we do our best to get together and give you guys a good show. I hope you appreciate it and catch you on a rebound. All right. And yeah, I want to thank everybody. Uh, we won't be filming the Ultimate Perspective Chapter 7 for like at least two weeks. Um, when I, I'll be gone for 10 days, but we will be going live a lot <laughs> from my phone or from my computer by the pool. So, so. JB is not on, on vacation. He's not on a break. He's going to be online too. So <laughs> the only thing is that we'll be posting a lot of videos. You know, we got some stuff coming up, but, you know, kind of looking yep. forward to it. But thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. And, you know, anybody who's checking us out um, during the, re the the broadcast or Afterwards, I want to I appreciate you guys subscribing and listening in and enjoying our content. And if you have any questions, I will be leaving the emails on our description on the description of the show. And also, you know, anybody wants to donate to the show through to me or to JB, we're gonna okay. we have it here, yeah. but we're gonna post it. I'm gonna post it as well on the on the description. All right. So, with that being said. JB, thank you very much, my brother. And we'll definitely be talking probably after the show's done, recorded. And, you know, have a great one, brother. All right. You too, man. Mm -hmm. take place today for one-year-old twins who died after their father left them in a hot car apparently by accident. Juan Rodriguez is charged with manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, and endangering the welfare of a child. Prosecutors have not yet decided whether to proceed with the case. There have been 24 hot car deaths this year after 52 last year. Nikki Batiste is following this case. Nikki, how long could the legal case last? Anthony, good morning. It's expected to last several weeks as prosecutors search for any clues that the father could have left his kids in the car on purpose. But the family insists it was simply a horrible accident. Mr. Rodriguez is hot wrenched and hot broken. Outside a Bronx courthouse Thursday, Juan Rodriguez and his family stood in tears as their attorney pleaded to the Bronx DA for forgiveness. We're appealing to her sense of justice to do what we believe to be the right thing, and that is to dismiss these charges. The 39 year old Iraq war veteran was charged after police say he left his one year old twins, Phoenix and Luna, in a hot car last Friday. He found them strapped in their car seats after his eight hour work shift as a social worker at the VA hospital. We believe that at the conclusion of them evaluating all the facts, all the evidence and everything in this case, they will come to the conclusion 
that this was a horrible tragedy. Temperatures in New York City last Friday reached 85 degrees. Inside a car, that number could jump to about 105 degrees in just 10 minutes. In a statement, the family attorney said they will appeal to the state legislature to pass a new law that would ensure that all vehicles are equipped with a device that alerts parents to the presence of their children. He has nothing at all uh, to harbor and hide other than to feel misery and sorrow about what happened in this case. They really have to be willing to open up their entire lives to investigators. CBS News analyst Ricky Kleeman says prosecutors will likely search through Rodriguez's cell phone records and online search history to try to prove a motive. But she says it is also on the Rodriguez family to prove that this was simply a memory lapse. They have to be willing to say, talk to my neighbors, talk to my relatives, talk to the people that I work with, and not hold anything back. Because that's the only way that a prosecutor can be sure, or as sure as one can be, that this really was an accident and not a plan. Rodriguez's next court hearing is set for August 27th to try to prevent more deaths, both houses of Congress are debating bills that would standardize child monitoring alerts on all passenger vehicles. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah, it sure does. This is so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. It's interesting. I was asking one of our colleagues who has three young children if he could imagine leaving his kids in the car. He said, yeah, I'm so busy. Really? Yeah. I'm tired. There, there have yeah. been medical studies that have been done that have shown that people do it quite often, in fact, because yeah. of the way our brains are wired. We get into a mode where we're just going along doing the things the that routine. we do. It's a routine and right. it can happen to anybody. Yeah. They say just like you might forget to stop at the grocery store. Yeah. Sad. Nikki, thank you.